If you tell all the four approaches, there is absolutely no chance that you're gonna be rejected in that interview. Hey everyone, uh, this is Trevor here. So welcome to uh, today's lecture where we will be solving the third problem from the SDE sheet that is the repeat and the missing number. So the problem statement states that you'll be given an unordered array of size n. The array elements will always be in the range 1 to n and among the array numbers, one number will be missing while the other number will be repeating twice. So your task is to find both the numbers. So if we look at this input, we see that the array length is three. So the numbers that should be present are one, two and three, but we see that two is missing. So the missing number is two and we see that three is repeating twice. And in the second example, if we carefully observe four, three, six, two, one, one. So we see that missing is five and the number that is repeating is one. Now the next approach that you're going to tell the interviewer is to better the previous approach. Now for that, you can use hashing. Now you know that the numbers will always range between one to six over here because the array size is six. So what you need to do is you need to create an array of size seven. So you have a frequency array, everything initialized with zero. After this, you're going to linearly traverse. So for the first time you find four. So you go to the fourth index and increase it by one. Next time you'll find three. So you go to the index and increase it by one. Next time you find six. So you go to the index six and increase it by one. Next time you find two. So you go to the index two and increase it by one. Next time you find one. So you go to the index one and increase it by one. Next time you again find one. So you go to the index one and increase it by one. So after you have completed the entire linear traversal of the array, you can see that from one to six, one of the index will have a value zero. So that will be your missing number. And one of the index will have a value greater than one. That is one over here. That will be your repeating number. Now the time complexity for this will be bigger of n for the first traversal and bigo of n again for the traversal in the frequency array which makes it a total of bigo of 2n if we talk about the space complexity the space complexity will simply stand at bigo of n so there's one more approach that uses negation of index now whenever you are in an interview try avoiding that approach because that will actually modify the array and usually uh, none of the interviewers will like you to modify any of the given inputs we have two optimal approaches. So I'll be discussing both. So let's discuss the first optimal approach. So the first optimal approach is that you know that the numbers are from one to n. So we know that if we sum up the numbers from one to n, the summation will be n into n plus one by two. And we can refer that as capital S. Now, if we summate the square of numbers, that will be n into n plus one into two n plus one by six in basic uh, stuffs that you have studied in class 10. So let's assume this to be capital S square. So what you need to do is you need to write the summation and you got to subtract all the elements from it. That is four plus three plus six plus two plus one plus one. Now your summation over here is so once you start subtracting, you'll actually find five on this side and one on this side remaining. So this will actually be four. So I've interpreted values over here. But what if if we talk in general terms? So in that case, we can say X to be the missing number while Y to be the repeating number. So X minus Y can be written as S where S is actually the summation of one to N and then the entire thing subtracted. So we will get X minus Y. Similarly, if we take the second equation and write summation square, four square plus three square plus six square plus two square plus one square plus one square. And over here, we put down squares. So we will get something like five square minus one square equal to 24. So we can again write it as X square minus Y square equal to 24. So if you write down the two equations that we get, we'll get X square minus Y square equal to 24 for this given array and X minus Y equal to four for this given array. So if I write X square minus Y square, that will be X minus Y and X plus Y equal to 24. And we know the value of X minus Y that is four. 
So you can write 4 and x plus y equal to 24. So the value of x plus y that we will get will be equal to 6. So we can again write x plus y equal to 6 while x minus y equal to 4. Now if we add the uh, two equations, we will get 2x equal to 10, which will give us x equal to 5, which is the missing number. And if we put the value x in the first equation, we will get the value of y as 1. That is the repeating number. So in this way, we can get the missing and the repeating number. But uh, there are certain limitations to this approach since we are using something as square. So the summations might exceed. So just in case the interviewer uh, tells you that all the numbers are in integers, it might happen uh, when you add all the squares of the numbers, you might require a long or a long, long data type to store the summation. So the uh, most optimal approach that I'm going to talk about will be using Zor property. So initially, you're going to assign Zor as zero. And after this, you have to linearly traverse through the array and you need to do a Zor of four, Zor 3, Zor 6, Zor 2, Zor 1, Zor 1, which will give you the value as 3. So you get the Zor as 3. So once you get the Zor as 3, what you need to do is you need to take that 3 and you need to Zor it with 1, Zor 2, Zor 3, Zor 4, Zor 5, Zor 6. Basically all the numbers from a 1 to 6 or 1 to n. And when you do this, you will actually get 4. Now, what is this for actually? Now, this for is x, zor, y. Now, when I say x, zor, y, x is the missing number and y is the repeating number. So, how did I figure this x, zor, y? So, where did this 3 come up from? This 3 came up from here. So, if you write this 3 in terms of 4, zor, 3, zor, 6, zor, 2, zor, 1, and then you write zor of 1, zor, 2, zor, 3, zor, 4, Zor 5, Zor 6, and after that, when you do the Zor, 4 and 4 gets cancelled, 3 and 3 gets cancelled, 2 and 2 gets cancelled, 1 and 1 gets cancelled, 6 and 6 gets cancelled. The only numbers remaining will be 1 and 5, which where eventually you're missing and the repeating number. So that is the point where we figure out that the Zor obtained will be x, Zor y. Now, how can uh, this actually help us to uh, find the missing and repeating numbers because we only have X or Y. Now, this is the moment where we are going to separate the numbers. Now, when I say separation, what does that mean? So I'm sure that X and Y are different. Now, when I write four, that actually means one zero zero. So what that actually tells you about X and Y that actually tells you that either of X is zero or one or either of y is 1 or 0 because when you are doing a zor either it has to be 0 or 1 to get this one or it has to be 1 or 0 to get this one because zeros or 0 will never give you that or neither will 1s or 1 give you that so we are for sure that either of the bit in x or y must be set on this index let's not care about the further stuffs now since x and y are different so we can surely say that we will surely have an index where the bits will be different. So your task uh, is to find the bit that is set in four. You can find any bit that is set because we know the bit which is set will have different bits in X and Y. So assume that I am trying to find the rightmost bit that is set in four. So for four, we have one zero zero. So the rightmost bit is this one zero zero. Now your next task is to classify the numbers into two sets. So what you need to do is you need to create two empty buckets and you're going to iterate over the array again. So you have four. So four can be written in binary as one zero zero. So if you actually see uh, the rightmost bit that we took was on the second index. So we check out if the second index on this four is set or not. So if this is set, what we do is we plug that four over in the first set. The next time we go to three, now three will be something as zero, one, one. So the second bit is not set. So we plug it in the second set. Next time we get six, six is one, one, zero. So again, the second bit is set. So we plug it in on the first set. We go to two, two will be one, zero. So that is not set. So when this is not set, we plug it in on the second set. Next time we go on to one, 
that is again the second bit is not set we plug it in over here again we go to the next set that is one so we plug that in over here so now we have two buckets let's call this as bucket one and bucket two but how are we going to find the missing and the repeating numbers so for this what you need to do is you gotta take one two three four five six again so once you have uh, written down all the numbers you need to write down the binary representation of four and check out the rightmost set bit because again at that number x and y will be differing after this you'll be linearly traversing in one two six and you'll be classifying these numbers into these two buckets so for one the second index bit is not set so you put one over here for two the second index bit is not set so you put it over here for three the second index bit is not set so you put it over here for four the second index bit is set because four is one zero zero for five the second index bit is set so you put it over here for six the second index bit is set now you can surely say that when you zor these numbers you will actually get five because six and six will get cancelled four and four will get cancelled so the only number left off will be five over here when you zor the numbers one and one goes cancelled 2 and 2 goes cancel, 3 and 3 goes cancel. So you can get the number as 1. So the first set will give you as 5, which will be our missing number. And the second set will give us 1, which will be our repeating number. Now again, if the interview tells you that uh, which number among these is the missing number and which number among these is the repeating number, you can directly tell him that I'll again linearly traverse to find out which is the missing number and which is the repeating number. That's a very straightforward task. So I'll summarize this algorithm in steps and actually give you an overview on why did this algorithm work. So to summarize the algorithm, the first step was very simple. You sort down all the array numbers. Then whatever you get as X, you sort it down with all the numbers from one to N. Now, why do we do that? To get X or Y equal to num. Now this was done basically to classify them into two buckets. Because when we classify them into two buckets, we will easily get the numbers. After we get the number, we find the rightmost bit with one because we already discussed if it is one. And since we are doing X, so Y, so that means either of this will be one and this will be zero or this will be one or this will be zero. So I am for sure. So I'm sure that the bit at that index will either be set in X or either be set in Y. They cannot be set in both of them. So in this uh, way, I can actually tell that either of my X or Y will either lie in the first bucket or the second bucket, but they will never lie in the same bucket. So in this way, I actually split it down X and Y into two separate buckets. So I've separated down my numbers into two buckets. Now at the next time to actually eliminate the extra numbers, what I did was I again separated one to n into two buckets. Now in doing that, if you actually remember, we eliminated the extra numbers. Now when we eliminate the extra numbers, obviously we will get the missing number over here and we will get the repeating number over here that we got. So why did we get the missing number? The reason is we already had a bunch of numbers, right? And after that, from one to n, we got another bunch of numbers. Now we know that they have that bit set so these numbers will be equivalent to this apart from one number that will be missing so i can claim that to be the missing number and over here the same concept that these numbers will be equal to these numbers apart from one number which actually occurs twice over here so that twice gets cancelled over here and it is remaining once more over here so i get that number everything gets cancelled apart from this single number that stays so that is why I separated them in two baskets and got the number. If you talk about the complexity, what will be the complexity? We go of n over here. We go of n over here to separate them into two baskets. We go of n over here and to again separate them into two baskets. We go of n. So it's near about we go of 5n complexity. Now, when you are in an interview, you can tell this approach or you can also tell the summation approach. Now it completely depends on the interviewer, the interviewer choice. Because what I can assure you is if you tell all the four approaches, there is absolutely no chance that you're going to be rejected in that interview. So with this, I wrap up this lecture just in case you understood the entire explanation. 
make sure you hit the like button and yes uh, do drop a comment that you understood this explanation and if you're new to our channel make sure you subscribe to our channel and watch out my other videos with this i wrap up this lecture let's meet in the next lecture where i will be solving the fourth problem from the sd sheet